Welcome, I'm journalist Taylor Hudak, and today you will hear from retired Swiss banker Pascal Najati, who has brought a lawsuit against the president of Switzerland and the Minister of Home Affairs, Alain Berset, over the mishandling of the COVID crisis and the vaccination campaign. Pascal will be joined by Professor Sujarit Bakti for a discussion on the legal case. Professor Bakti will also discuss the recent and significant developments coming out of Thailand. So now I would like to welcome both gentlemen, Professor Sujarit Bakti and Pascal Nishadi. Professor, you go ahead. I will start by saying that I am actually uh, virtually a Swiss because my father was ambassador to Switzerland in 1948 to 1952, and I spent four years of my childhood, four of the happiest years in Bern. And I always admired the Swiss so tremendously, and my parents too. When I left Switzerland in 1952, that was uh, the year that the son of the late king was born, <laughs> 1952. Um, I thought to myself, it would be so great to one day go back to Switzerland. And now, after these decades, and they are seven, seven decades, I have come back to Switzerland because of Pascal Najadi. And I have refound my pride of being part of Switzerland and of knowing Swiss people because of this great person who is showing the world what Switzerland really is. And the, 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 the wonderful thing is, of course, Pascal is a cosmopolitan. He is not really Swiss. He has Asian roots combined to Switzerland. And he's done something that is so incredible and so wonderful that I thought that we had to get together, uh, Switzerland and Thailand, and talk to you today to tell you what amazing things have been happening in our two countries. So, uh, Pascal, I would like to come to you now and say uh, our admiration, all Thailand admires you, much more than Germany admires you. We admire you. And we've been talking about you the last weeks, you can believe me. Um, and we have said, why doesn't the world get up and follow your example? And I can tell you that the German lawyers first have gotten up and are following your example now. So we know that you have had not only the courage, but the stamina and the intelligence. You know, this is, this is the thing that is lacking, lacking everywhere. The intellect and the intelligence to go and file a court case against the uppermost uh, authorities, your president, who, of course, I am convinced is a criminal. I am convinced he's a criminal. I would never be able to say this in public, but you are saying this, and this is so incredible and wonderful. And I would like to ask you, uh, how is your court case proceeding? Thank you, Professor. I'm honored to be here and thank you everybody for being here and giving me a chance to, to talk. I'm here in Lucerne in the medieval city. The house is 500 years old I'm sitting in. A lot of birth has been given here in this house. A lot of people died in this house. Um, brief history. I'm born here in Lucerne, 1967. I'm 55 years old. My mother is Swiss from Lucerne and my father was Persian. He was a banker. We had banks in Asia and in Middle East, and he got assassinated in 2013 in Malaysia. We're still investigating, by the way. And I was a 
global investment banker working in London and New York and Kazakhstan. Um, I was advising heads of states. My territory was the Russian Federation, Central Asia, Middle East, Africa, and Central Europe. Uh, by the way, long history with Hungary. I understand someone, somebody here is from Budapest or from Hungary. Um, the only thing which I inherited from my father, the most important thing is DNA is integrity. And one object I want to show it to you. This is an antique Parisian um, hammer of a judge. And it's from René Journiac. He also was an advisor to President Shiska Restan. Unfortunately, he crashed in a plane in Africa with an African president. But he gave it to my father. And this is the symbol of justice. As is my flag, my country, Switzerland. I have been involved in many crises of governments. Some of them were discussions of war and peace. And what I'm doing now is the duty of a Swiss citizen, according to Article 6 of our Swiss constitution, meaning to uphold, respect the laws, the constitution, and justice, so that the democracy that we are blessed with, rare on this earth, will be upheld and can continue for generations to last. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a strategic banker and advisor. And in this case, I have to tell everybody again, me, my wife, and my mother, she's 80, we are vaccinated or injected three times by Pfizer-BioNTech mRNA. Stop. By the way, my mother's side, my great-granduncle was president of Switzerland and federal council, his famous Rudolf Minger. I feel also for him obliged to seek justice in this country so that the people can be free. This case, this flag is now watched globally because it's the only and the first uh, running uh, criminal case against a sitting head of state regarding the vaccine policy that has been driving, uh, he's been driving as Minister of Health in Switzerland for the past three years, still ongoing. He's still Minister of Health, now he's president. At this juncture, to be fair and to be clear, all what we are talking about, President Berset, Alain Berset, is under the presumption of innocence. I'm not the judge, I'm not the prosecution, I leave this to the justice system to handle. I have filed criminal charges, so I'm not filing a lawsuit. I have filed criminal charges with the police on the 2nd of December in Lucerne last year, after I found out from Pfizer, Shannon Small, that the endpoints of the vaccine have never been tested. She said that in a grand forum of the European Parliament. I was shocked. So I went back to the record of official statements. And I came to the uh, Federal Office of Public Health, which is presided by and handled by President Berset, still today, at the time, on the 3rd of August 21, Dr. Virginie Massere said in a press conference to journalists and their colleagues on the board, that, un, uh, that vaccinated people transmit the virus as much as unvaccinated people and are not protected from the coronavirus. Okay, I made a note. I went on and on and on, and the government kept on proclaiming on all channels, through social media to government TV and backwards, print media, the vaccine is safe. The vaccine has been tested like other vaccines have been tested and regulated in this country, and it protects you from infection and from retransmission to other people. Now, on the 27th of October, 21, I found 
a television program, prime time, President Berset, at that time, Federal Council, and again, Minister of Health, said, with the certificate, you can show that you are not contagious. Clear, I make a note. So I find out there is a, how you call it, a contra verite, an untruth spoken in public, contradicting his own head of infection control, Dr. Virginie Massere, from August of the same year, three months back, which means the Ministry of Health knew, at least what I can judge from, in August 21, that the vaccine is not functioning. He said this statement in October, with the certificate, you can show that you are not contagious because he wanted to push through the unconstitutional, by the way, COVID law, which created a two-speed society, which is fascism, in my personal view. Leave that aside, I'm not a constitutional lawyer. I took the decision, and it was not easy, but I had to do it. If I observe a crime, if Harry shoots Miller on the street here with a gun, I have to call the police and report it. So I took that down on a memo, on a one-page memo. It's famous because it's so short. Went to the police station, filed the criminal charges at the police station, and then it went to the cantonal, the state prosecution, for about one week. And then it went, it continued its voyage. It was not rejected to the highest authority in prosecution, to the federal prosecution of this country in Bern, the Attorney General. Since then, I have, I must say, a very pleasant, coherent, transparent communication with the prosecutor of, of Switzerland, who is handling the dossier. I have a a deadline of the 23rd of January, a few days ago, and I have, within the deadline, successfully submitted the extension of the criminal charges, which is nine pages. I will not go for prosecution technical reasons into details and contents of that extension, because, again, I'm not the prosecutor, I'm not the judge. I trust that the justice system functions in Switzerland and the whole world now is looking at this case to see how our justice is handling this criminal case against now president and federal council and minister of health and interior of Switzerland regarding the handling of the vaccination program in this country involving 9 million people's health, of which 70%, according to statistics, are jabbed at least once. And many of them have serious medical conditions, or unfortunately, uh, some of them died in consequence of the mRNA injection. So for me, and I tell you to all of you and the world, I always said it on the, the New Year's speech I made on YouTube, it's still there. The year 2023 is the year of absolute truth for humanity. And I mean it because we look at mathematics, it's the largest science of all sciences. Mathematics can explain everything in the universe that we know. But mathematics is only one science. Um, Focus. It is the search always for absolute truth. And this mission is given to us, human beings, and justice to function and run its course. I cannot tell you how fast it will go. However, I have demanded certain immediate actions because there is lives at risk. The, the vaccination program is still going on. 
with a substance that we now know is poison for the body and the doses is unknown. It's, it's a vaccination program based on a substance that technically, and I'm not a, a, a toxicologist, but I've learned from professors that is impossible to authorize through a regulator of any country in this world. So this is what I have done. And I've done it also with the guidance of Jesus Christ and God, because there's a higher being that has created us. And we are humans and we have to look to unite. And the last thing I want to say is we have to be calm, we have to be strong and united. Then the people will be free. Pascal, thank you uh, for these words that move the heart and the soul, my heart and my soul. You are Christian, I am Buddhist, but spiritually we are linked. Absolutely. And um, uh, Pascal, it's amazing that this 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 connection between Switzerland and Thailand is now uh, emerging as something that may be giving many people hope. You are giving people so much hope. You are half Asian, well, Persia or Asian. Yeah. I'm whole Asian. I um, spent my childhood in Switzerland. <laughs> this is really... I, I me mean, in Singapore. <laughs> yes. But, um, and, and, and then I went on to study medicine in Germany. I had so many wonderful German friends and colleagues. But then Corona came. And Corona has split us. Uh, we have lost our friends here, our colleagues, uh, uh, in whom we are bitterly disappointed, our physician friends and colleagues who should, should know better, but do not. And we realized, uh, because in the meantime, I became chair and head of department of the Institute of Medical Microbiology and Hygiene at the Mainz University, which was the biggest uh, department of its sort in Germany at that time. That was 20 years ago, no, 30 years ago, my God. Um, and I trained over 10,000 German physicians and medics who, are, who have now also contacted me to say that they were uh, glad to have been trained uh, in an institution that always strived for the truth. This is what you have said. We need to strive for the truth. And science and the media and politics are trying with all their might to obscure the truth. So um, let me tell you uh, the wonderful thing that happened uh, when we decided to go back to Thailand for a holiday, which was badly needed. This was the beginning of January this year. So there are Thai activists uh, in Thailand with whom we have been connected over the past year. And they said, if you are coming to Thailand, uh, I am still a Thai, by the way, I, Thai German, uh, we will connect you with uh, authorities and advisors to the highest authorities in Thailand. And this is what happened. And uh, so I had the opportunity, the first opportunity in three years to talk to the top advisors of a government in any country. And um, it was very, very impressive because um, I laid out to them that this whole COVID-19 agenda is a fake and why it's a fake. And I was able to lay out before them the proof that the COVID-19 
vaccinations were based on fraud. I think the Thai uh, advisors to the government and to the royal family were the first in the world to, to obtain the proof which anyone has access to. Now, Taylor, uh, do we have this uh, online? Can we, sh I, I showed just three, just three slides. And I was uh, there uh, with, with very few people, but they knew everything. Taylor, can we have the first uh, slide of the presentation? Yes. So I showed them this first. Uh, that uh, BioNTech, BioNTech, of course, was manipulated. Uh, they were the small German company with no name at all that Bill Gates had selected to do the job because BioNTech as a German company would be under the regulation of the only regulative authority that could grant uh, the permission to go on to do clinical trials. And this is the Paul Ehrlich Institute. And the Paul Ehrlich Institute, of course, was fully informed about all of this. Now, uh, what the, the incredible thing is that BioNTech itself published in its uh, report to uh, the stakeholders, <laughs> are the people who had the stakes, uh, in the report of 2019, that they had developed an mRNA vaccine against COVID-19. You see this here. It's in German, but it's also available in English. And they reported postscriptum in May of 2020, that the preclinical trials, this is preclinic, this means preclinical trials, had been completed successfully, and that their clinical trials had been uh, ongoing and almost 50% had been completed. You see, phase one clinical trials. Now, because it is known that BioNTech started developing the so-called vaccine in January. How in God's name could they have finished the preclinical animal trials for safety and efficacy by April, May, 2020? And the answer is, of course they couldn't have, and they hadn't. And this is the wonderful thing about it. They have exposed themselves. Yeah. These fraudulent claims are published and are available to the whole world, including Thailand. That's what I said, all right? So the next, the question was, how could they have done this? And uh, the answer is, they had not done this. And the even more wonderful thing is that uh, the founders of BioNTech themselves, together with a person named Joe Miller, reported in a book that is available to everyone how they were able to do this fraud. And, and it is written there that they said it was clear to them that they would never able never ever have been able to do the required experiments required by international regulations and law. There's nothing that exempts anyone from doing this. If you're going to inject something into the body of a person, that then, then you have to show that it is safe and you have to show that it has been done the safety trials have been done in animal experiments. Now, these experiments had not been done in May 2020, despite the facts that BioNTech claimed that they had been done. 
This is the telescope technique that was used by the WHO, the FDA, the whole world thought they could be done in parallel, but then they were bound to show data from 2020 that these experiments had been done postscriptum afterwards. All right, now, was that the case? Next slide, please. You see, BioNTech itself uh, submitted a non-clinical evaluation report to the Australian government in January 2021. And in this report, they stated very clearly, three point safety pharmacology, yeah. that in 2020, no safety pharmacology, pharmacology studies were conducted. It is, it is absolutely damning because it showed that in 2020, no safety pharmacological studies had been conducted at all. Now, in 2020, and this was submitted in January 2021. Now, in 2021, in December, there was a scientific publication in one of the best journals uh, existent, iScience, mm. stating that these people had used the lipid nanoparticles that were being used by BioNTech and Moderna. And if they injected this into animals, this was highly toxic and even lethal, deadly. So in fact, they had done the preclinical safety studies that BioNTech Pfizer should have done. And the answer is damning. So damning that with the, with the, uh, appearance of this article in the international literature, Pfizer and BioNTech were bound by law to retract their so-called vaccine. But they did not. Instead, they went on selling this vac vaccine, not only to Thailand, but to the entire world. And von der Leyen, I don't know whether you know her name. She's crazy. Uh, she ordered for the EU 5 billion doses of this vaccine, which cost at least 50 to 100 billion euros, which the European taxpayers are going to have to pay for. Although this article had appeared now, Guys, how far do we want to go with this? One last thing, Pascal. Yeah. Uh, because of the uh, work of someone in the background who has never revealed himself, the EMA, European Medical Agencies, was asked again and again and again to reveal whether BioNTech Pfizer had ever performed any safety pharmacological studies in 2021 and 2022. Mm -hmm. And the answer is available to us and to you. The official answer submitted on the 18th of October of 2022, 18th of October, which we have at our disposal. Mm -hmm. The EMA declared officially that safety pharmacological studies were never performed, never, and they were never deemed necessary. So now we have it. And when I told the Thais this, you know, guys, they jumped up. They jumped up in the room and they said, Thailand is going to join Switzerland. Thailand is going to join Switzerland and show the world how to go. Because the, the contract to buy millions of doses of that damn vaccine that is deadly, known to be deadly, not because of the mRNA, but just because of the lipids that 
are packaging the mRNA. That is enough to kill people. And it's the, enough. And the spike proteins that are out of control production. Not even the spike protein is necessary. You just have to take the packaging and that in itself is deadly. And that in itself will cause anyone, will, will, will force anyone to say nothing that is packaged in this deadly package can be safe. If the package itself is deadly, then you don't have to ask what is in the package. All right, so it's so easy and it's so straightforward. And then they said, all right. And they were Googling and said, uh, the contract was signed in Thailand with Pfizer BioNTech. And uh, in this case, it was based on fraud because there were no safety studies. And therefore, and it is now known that this package is not safe. It is immaterial what is in the package. It is not safe because of the packaging. And so they said to me, we will see to it that Thailand is the first country in the world that is going to declare this contract null and nullify the contract, which means that Pfizer Biotech is going to have to pay back those billions to Thailand, with which Thailand will recompensate those peoples that have lost their existence. You know, we know, Pascal, they, you go to Thailand, people are so poor, they've lost everything and they've lost their lives. And then I said, guys, listen, something happened, you know, in December. And that is that the one daughter of the present king, Ram the 10th, collapsed and is in coma. She, uh, within, uh, I think it was 23 days after the third shot. And she's young. Of course, 44 years old, never been seriously ill, collapsed and is now in a coma. And the diagnosis that was given by the authorities and by the university is so ridiculous. She's supposed to have a bacterial infection that will never do what she's suffering from. And so we uh, determined and uh, the activists in Thailand uh, who have been on this for many, many months now, great guys, also a professor from the university in Bangkok. He's gotten in touch with the royal family and we are sending information to the royal family to alert them to the fact that in all probability, the princess is suffering as a victim of this jab, as so many people around the world have been suffering. It's cardiac. Her heart failed, okay? Her heart failed. And uh, because her heart failed, her brain did not get the oxygen that's needed. And she's still in the intensive care department in Thailand now after more than six weeks. Yeah. So it's very, very serious. And if we are able in Thailand to start a movement to say, file a case against Pfizer BioNTech that they pay for the damage they have done. That's made it. And I'm, I've been trying to tell you, Pascal, you Swiss, add this, add this to the charge and also go and uh -huh. file a case against Pfizer BioNTech. And I've been told by German lawyers now, that this case against Pfizer by Pfizer can be filed in America. And this is going to cost them if they lose, and they will lose millions and billions because these lipids, the enclosing of the mRNA, which is being used now for more and more vaccines, that you must be aware of, they are being now released to the world. 
These lipid components come from America, not from Germany, not from England, not from Switzerland, but from America. And therefore, Pfizer is liable because yeah. they're killing people. Uh, now, my last words, Pascal. Realize that the next vaccines, mRNA, packaged in these deadly, deadly packagings, uh, are directed against pneumovirus, as Bill Gates declared three years ago, the pneumovirus is going to be the next. Uh, they are going to release this in spring. Realize that the first vaccinations against influenza, the flu, are mRNA based and packaged in the same, in the same lipids that are killing people, realize, and this is my last word, that virtually all the vaccines that are in use in veterinary medicine for all the animals in the world that have to be vaccinated, all, all are now being Transform to the mRNA platform with the same with the same envelopes, and no one knows about this. It's being done undercover. It's not being told to anyone, and it is it is uh, generating an income for Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna that is exorbitant. If the can get this through and they're doing it right now under your noses. They can stop the human vaccines without being hurt because they're earning so much in, in this other field that they're saved. So I am I get so emotional about this, Pascal. And 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 and, and I'm I'm so glad that all of you are listening to this because if we don't stop them. No one will. We, with the help of the higher being, we will stop it. I give you my word. But I'm not prosecution, I'm not the judge. I'd like to add a few things. To get emotional here is, is I think, perfectly normal. It is devastating what has happened to people. And I'm very sorry for a crown princess that is now on a hung, lot, hung lung and heart machine. It must be terrible for the parents, unthinkable. I also heard that one of the sons of His Royal Highness has turbo cancer. Is that confirmed? Uh, I have been trying to obtain confirmation, but it seems to be so. Terrible. The history between our nations is great, it's true. Your late king, God bless his soul, made his schooling in Switzerland. And Switzerland was one of the first trade access with the kingdom of Thailand. So and my father was taking care of him yeah. in Lausanne. Exactly. Few points I might to want to add on the political front. I've been advising heads of states in crisis. On this one, justice will have to do its job and they will. The government has two options. One is, to ignore, one is to ignore it, or one is to acknowledge. If they ignore, the system will be dysfunctional and will be for no use for the public for generations to come. WHO, I'd like to highlight, has been propagating, ordering, recommending 5 billion people to be injected with this stuff. I remind everybody, WHO is a privately financed NGO based in Geneva, which has in its first statutes point charter, we care for human health, humanity and human health. Well, this episode, is a clear contradicting fact that they are not. 
Sure. I'd like to highlight that. It's a very important point legally. The WHO, in my view, carries all responsibility, including, of course, Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna, and all these people who have produced that weapon, the bioweapon. It's not medicine. I've been briefed by Stefan Hockerts, Professor Hockerts, for five hours in this house about mRNA technology and what you just beautifully explained, the danger of this lipid, uh, lipid dog. Lipid. Lipid, lipid, what do you call this? The packaging. Packaging. The packaging. Nanoparticles. And I would like to add, Professor, I learned spike proteins being produced out of control. Sure. In the body. Oh, absolutely. And On top of everything. <laughs> attack organs, heart, brain, lungs, liver, kidney, whatever. I had an exchange with Swiss Medic. And I, before coming onto this wonderful call with all of you, I gave a copy to Thomas, Dr. Thomas Binder. Thomas, please spread it to all the members. My email exchange I had with Swiss Medic in January. I ask stupid questions about five emails, four from back, because I'm not a professor, I'm not an expert from medical science, I'm a banker, an advisor to governments. I have no clue about science, no, but, that's I learn, but I learn not from true. people who are more intelligent than I am. No, don't. <laughs> I, don't do. I know that. aspirin, no headache and all these things. <laughs> so I had an exchange and to make a long story short, I narrowed my questions. After every stupid answer, I made a more intelligent question. I narrowed it. And the last question was, I'd like to know the bow plan, the scale of the mRNA. I'd like to know the doses of the spike proteins produced in my body according to this plan. They wrote back to me saying, first, I shouldn't worry. <laughs> but the mRNA and spikes will be disposed of the natural body fluids within Kurzzeit, it means, in my understanding, a few days. Uh -huh. We know it's up to six months and even longer. And then comes the beautiful sentence, which is great that they wrote it because I have it in writing. They said, therefore, we cannot tell you the doses produced spike proteins in your body. That sentence is worth more than anything else. It will not bring back lives lost, but they have not died in vain, I can tell you. Then I wrote an email back and please Thomas, share it with everybody after the call. I have reprimanded Dr. Dr. Bolte, the CEO of Swiss Medic. It was at night. And I said, basically I said, now you have underwritten your own bankruptcy. You have contravened Article 3 of the Heilmittel Gesetz of Switzerland, which is a penal code. And I said, I quoted Paracelsus 1540, the doses makes the poison. And I said, because you cannot indicate the doses, this product must be stopped immediately, taken off the market Immediately. immediately, and you have to warn the public immediately, immediately about the consequences. And I said, from this email date, which I quoted, you are now, in my view, navigating in criminal territory. And I, I requested immediate action forthwith and an answer. Well, guess what? 15th of January, zero answer. It went to legal department, of course. I'm glad that they made this mistake because, again, they blew themselves up completely in writing with a date stamp. And Thomas has the whole communication. Please spread it to all the members here and please spread this communication wherever you like it to. I would also like to say that I'm very sorry what happened to the royal family of Thailand. I cannot imagine what they're going through. I cannot imagine also what other people are going through where their loved ones died or are in severe in a wheelchair or severe mental conditions. I cannot imagine. 
People tell me, oh, Pascal, it's unthinkable. That's the word, undenkbar. They are hiding behind their own psychosis, behind the word, oh, it's undenkbar, unthinkable. Next topic. And I say to people, you have to learn to think the thought. You have to pierce through the word unthinkable to discover the truth. And that is what is happening now worldwide. And Switzerland is the example in many things. And again, it will be. So I say, die Leute müssen lernen, die Denke zu denken. And I say, when reality conquers illusion, it's time to wake up and act. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Pascal. It's simply great. I think we all love you. I love <laughs> <That's>... you too. <laughs> my wife is here. My mother is listening later to the video. Great. We're very, very proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of all of you. All of you. <laughs>